All right, so here is the um, uh, Overture Easy Nylon. And uh, this is a part that I've printed out of a bunch of different materials, so it's a good uh, example to compare because I have some other materials to compare it to, including uh, carbon fiber nylon. I have the Sane Smart 25% carbon fiber. They also offer, a, I think, a 15% carbon fiber uh, that has they the properties vary between the two. I haven't tried the 15% yet. This is just nylon. There's no carbon fiber reinforcement in this. I've also printed this in uh, ASA pretty successfully uh, in, in the K1 and other printers uh, less successfully. And uh, also, I think I have some maybe some PLA. They might actually they're from last year. They may actually be ASA. But uh, anyway, we'll take a look at them also. As you can see, we're cranking along. It's not going super fast. It's just set at the standard 300 millimeters per second max. And it's going along good. And this thing would be uh, like 240 millimeters tall. So what's that? Eight, nine, close to 10 inches tall. But uh, we don't need that because I have samples here. So like here's a, a trunk. I just did a test version of it with, uh, as you can see, carbon nylon. And yeah, that's Saint Smart Carbon Nylon. Here's an ASA version. I'm not sure. This is probably ASA just because it's cracked. It could be PLA. This was left over from last year. It really, this shape really builds up the. Uh, stresses you get some gaps once it cracks and actually this piece this was one piece and I had it on my table and I, under a piece of paper and I leaned my elbow on it for some reason and it just cracked and split like crazy and then it just uh, over time it just uh, I don't know it bumped it again and it fell into two pieces but anyway so let's stop this and well I'll give it another second just because I'm going to talk about benchies so so here's the benchy that I printed in this material. Actually came out super clean, um, <clears throat> which is strange because this is a, the first part I printed with this material on this printer. Uh, I put it in an earlier video. And major curling on the edges. You can see that. Edges curling up like crazy. And... Uh, Oh, and I hope you like uh, my new microphone. <laughs> Somebody suggested that I was getting killed in the audio war by the printer, and I should get a microphone, and so I grabbed my uh, PC headset and plugged it into my phone. It seems to work, so hopefully that's better. Uh, but anyway, so you can see the bottom of this, the bottom surface of this, and this is the ov uh, Overture. Is it Overture? Easy Nylon. And I can't believe the bottom layer on this part was just so sort of uh, rough which is strange because this benchy is the same material printed right after it with the same settings and the top and the bottom layer is like flawless that's potentially the nicest bottom layer I've ever seen on a benchy look how crisp the lettering is there I mean usually you have to like squint to try to see what it even says in that it's just clearly what it says uh, I'm sure I didn't do any this is a uh, not the fine setting, so I'm not surprised that I can't see that that says Benchy or whatever it says. Uh, maybe if I put it on the fine detail and potentially a little slower. But anyway, super clean Benchy. Um, like no stringing, minimal errors. I could see looking up close with the camera, I could see like that, but that was just a little bit of fuzz stuck to it. Uh, like no, no spider webbing anywhere very clean print and this is like I say 300 millimeters per second max looks like a little bit of curve there at the at the wake line or whatever you would call that but anyway it looks pretty good so anyway I'm gonna pull this guy off of here like I said I could let a print to be almost a foot tall if I wanted to but I don't want it to uh, this is just a test print and this is just a good shape to test it I'm mostly curious because this <coughs> this carbon fiber nylon it's very flexible like try to get a good angle to show it flexing like I can flex the hell out of this thing like, can you see that I mean I'm flexing the hell out of it 
and it just takes it. Like I could twist it, and it's it's not trying to crack. I'm twisting it like 90 degrees, and there's no cracking. Where if I do that on, on even on the good one that I printed on this, where'd it go? The uh, this guy, even on this guy, uh, I need a tripod for my phone here. On this guy, like if I try to bend this guy, listen to a crack. There you go, split it right down there. So this is ASA, which is great because it's a UV protective material, and that's why I'm doing the ASA, uh, because this is a light shade for my uh, light bar on my side-by-side -side to keep the glare off my windshield. And so, I, like I say, I print them as, long, as tall as I can, and that way I have the fewest amount of pieces going across. It actually works really well. It's super effective keeping the glare off my windshield because uh, I could barely see with the light bar on previously before I put these shades on it. Put the shades on, it's, it's uh, all the difference in the world. Um, so let's take, let's uh, stop this print and let's see how this nylon, the plain nylon, compares to the carbon nylon. It seems very rigid on the, I would expect it to be more flexible, but I, I, on the on the benchy here, the plain nylon benchy, uh, like I went to bend the the chimney a little bit to see how flexible it was, and I heard it crack, and I said, okay, I'm not going to do that anymore. So this seems like extremely rigid, which seems strange for nylon. Uh, nylon usually gives a little bit. Uh, reinforced nylon tends to be stronger and stiffer, but it seems sort of backwards. This one seems extremely stiff with no reinforcement. Um, and uh, whereas this one is carbon fiber reinforced nylon, and I can bend this thing practically in a U shape. I mean, uh, I don't want I don't want to damage my printer here, but I mean I can really bend the hell out of this thing, and it mostly just bends back. And there's like no cracking. Like I can twist the hell out of it, no cracking. Um, so let's see. I should let this cool down a bit. You can see I have my custom uh, bed adhesion shapes. This this shape really likes to pull up off the bed, uh, especially with all the internal stresses that it creates, as you can see with the cracking on the ASA version. But this is not ASA. This is uh, I see nylon. I'm just going to put this up in the way of the cooling fan here. Get it to get it to cool off. Interestingly about materials, I, I have another print going on on my uh, Ender 3S1 Pro, and it's a it's a two material print. Now I don't have a dual material. I don't have a dual printing on dual material printing on that printer. But what I can do is just do layers of TPU, and then and so I've designed this specifically for this. And so I have layers of TPU, a few layers of TPU, and then I have a few layers of uh, uh, PLA all strategically uh, intertwined and it results in a flexible uh, product that's flexible where I want it and it's rigid where I want it and it works out pretty well but I, I and I had a few different colors of uh, TPU and I said oh great okay I did a bunch of testing in the in the one sort of green uh, TPU who makes that one well while, while I'm letting that cool the green TPU is uh, actual ninja flex by ninja tech which is like the the famous TPU stuff, or at least going back to the five years. So I've been printing. That was the first one I came across. That's a name brand uh, Ninja Flex. And then I also have some uh, Matter Hackers MH Build uh, TPU. They're just calling it plain TPU. And then I also have some Kodak. Believe it or not, I don't even know Kodak was still in business. I got some Kodak. Where's that bag? Believe it or not, George isn't at home. All right, no, believe it or not, Kodak brand filament, Flex 98, they call it. So when I did the, so I did a bunch in the uh, green Ninja Tech, Ninja Flex, and the thing works perfect because I sort of tuned the design with that material. And also, so the PLA part, I didn't give it too much thought on the PLA. And so then when I I finally printed a second version, oh no, the third version, the third uh, TPU looks to be potentially failing. 
Might be close enough to good enough for the test print, though. But anyway, uh, when I printed the MH build TPU with the same exact slice, G-code, it's way stiffer, way stiffer. Like, the product doesn't even work right anymore because the, the flexible part is too stiff. And uh, actually, the, the PLA on that one seemed to be more flexible than the other PLA that I had been using on the first tests. And so they vary quite a bit. It's kind of strange. But uh, uh, so I'm printing with the third, with now with the Kodak TPU to get a comparison there. And it uh, looks like it's failing in one spot, but it's probably good. And it'll be good enough, I think, to... Uh, although it's, early, it's 33%. I should almost just restart it. I'll give it a minute and think about it. But any in any case, let's pop this guy off. Should be cool enough now. Working one-handed here. Oh, that's almost off. Here we go. Definitely like the way this these uh, screws and uh, alignment features on the bed give you the exact same alignment every time. So you could even like pull this bed off and put it like power way through and put it back on. I think you'd be fine because uh, because it's uh, it's the first printer that I've had that's truly self-aligning like that. Um, in any case, where did it go? Oh, <laughs> so let's. Um, Let's do this. I'm just going to put the phone down for a second here. And I don't know if you can see this. Let's put that on a box, I guess, or something, or a spool of filament. A spool of filament will work. Some nice olive green PLA from Philocube. I really like this color. In any case, let's see. Whoa. All right, so we're got a little elevation. So here's our part here, and I'm gonna I need to. I should cut these off, but I'm just gonna break them off. Like who cares? I'm, I know I'm I'm damaging the first few layers, but that's fine. You can see those just break off if I don't cut them. I already know that better. I just rip them off for this purpose. I just want to find out how rigid this uh, nylon is compared to. Okay, it's still pretty flexible, and it doesn't seem to be. Oh. I got a little crack out of that. It does feel stiffer than... I mean, this came out a little taller. That shouldn't really matter. But this one, this is the carbon nylon. And, like, no cracking. And I can bend the hell out of it all over the place. And there's absolutely no cracking. Like, this carbon... This Saint Smart carbon nylon is great. Although, so there's no so there's no UV protection in it. So I'm tempted to do this for my side-by-side. -side, because that'll be super durable. But I suspect that over time in the sun, it will degrade. But that's probably fine. I keep it covered uh, when it's not in use anyway. And uh, so I imagine, you know, even if it only lasted me a year or two of service life before I needed to replace them, not a big deal. So as opposed to, so here's the ASA, which has the UV protection, which is why I want to use it. But <laughs> that's just what it does. Like... Like, it's strong. Don't get me wrong. It's very strong. Like, I, if I take this piece here, this big piece, I mean, it's super stiff. Like, if I try to bend it this way, you know, if I try to... Oop. <laughs> so, there you go. It, so, it isn't uh, indestructible, but it's pretty strong. But, and you know, but definitely... Uh, and it's not a super vulnerable spot under the light bar like that so i could probably get away with it although you, you get the occasionally do a little bushwhacker and you get the occasional branch into the thing could break it but they could just replace that one but this carbon nylon is just great so this is the um this is the nylon this is overture easy nylon i want to see how easily i can break it so i get a little crack out of it but it really doesn't want to break this is pretty durable if I've been at this, wow, it's stiffer than the carbon. It's, that's weird. It's stiffer than the carbon fiber, but they're all different blends. But this is very strong. This is the uh, the easy ni uh, easy nylon from Overture, and you know, like anything, you you know, you want to 
make sure you know any long shape uh, you want to give it or you know not necessarily with PLA but a lot of materials like to lift off the bed and so I would recommend you know either a brim and or custom brim I like to do custom brims sometimes at the especially something like this I don't need a huge brim everywhere but I need it at the at the ends and so that's why I have these circles where did they go I broke them off I threw them in the trash but anyway uh, the bot uh, the bottom layer I don't know how well you could see that but it looks decent. That was so weird that the bottom layer, this is the same material, and the bottom layer is so rough. Well, again, with the same material, this benchy bottom is so clear. Can you see that? Probably not great lighting in here. Let me bring this, move this light a little bit. Let me move this light. That should be a lot better. So, yeah. That is the, uh, that is about the cleanest bottom of a benchy I've ever seen. Uh, and the whole bench is like super high quality. Really, I when I zoomed in on it previously while it was printing, I thought the sides looked really rough. But I don't, now that it's finished, it's actually, and I hold it in my hand, it's actually a really nice finish all around. You say this was printed at 300 millimeters per second max. So it's pretty amazing that you can print that fast, uh, especially with more exotic materials. And it just, you know, as long as you have your brim there, and, you, and like I say, I use the... Uh, a little bit of glue stick and then and then wipe most of it off with some alcohol and coffee filter to 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 avoid uh lint and i take most of the most of the glue off as you can see there's a very thin layer of glue on there and i find that i can print a bunch of times before i need to reapply the glue and it's really easy to reapply the glue i just put a put a couple smears of the glue and and dump a splash of uh, alcohol on there and then wipe it down wipe most of it off sometimes i accidentally wipe, wipe too much off and i can't see it at all and so i'll just redo it it's really only you know it takes 30 seconds to a minute to uh, redo the bed and the parts come out like there's no glue residue on the bottom of this at all that i can tell now in the past when i've done with excessive glue stick the you know i'd have like a white layer white sticky layer on the bottoms of my prints and uh but this way the very thin glue stick layer works great. All right, that's enough for now. See you next time.